Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Euro MPs approve proposal to make companies find new employment for those they make redundant. Further, obligatory red tape for companies as the EU writes disclosure proposals on personal data. In your letters, strong opposition voiced to Theresa May over the undemocratic appointment of police commissioners. The EU reviews its human rights strategy. And episode 3 of Eurocon investigates the truth about the UK access to the single market. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit nightly news. First, from our homepage, our brainiacs in Brussels have come up with another directive of evil genius. This article considers the approved draft proposal to force companies to take responsibility for retraining and redeploying of staff that they wish to make redundant. I particularly like this article because it demonstrates the complete lack of knowledge and experience of private commerce and business by the EU machine. Anyone with even a basic schooling in business would laugh such a proposal out of their office as ridiculous and completely unworkable. And yet, across the void of EU space, minds immeasurably inferior to ours regard this draft as an incredible prize. Yet more proposed red tape from our Eurocrats in Brussels. This article puts forward a plan to enact fines and sanctions on companies that do not demonstrate transparency in the data protection policies. Now, it's worth noting the eminent intellectual on all things tech, Neely Crows, has a hand in this legislation too. Ultimately, whilst this targets companies as the bearers of responsibility, this is again an enactment of power for the state to enforce controls over the internet. As always, we'll keep watching and posting as this evolves. We're always looking for your letters and points of view. Indeed, we'd love to see more of you writing and informing us about the EU and how it's impacting you in both positive and negative ways. Today, we have a copy of a letter by Betty Williams of Exeter, who wrote to Theresa May to express her grave concerns over the execution and implementation of the police commissioner's elections in the UK. I have to say, Betty, I completely agree with you in this regard. How can it possibly be more democratic to remove nine publicly elected individuals that made up the police authorities in the regions and replace them with a single person? That leaves the system wide open for corruption and manipulation. Going beyond that, though, the situation gets worse. You see, only 14% of the illegible voting public turned out to vote, and the yes vote was an even smaller percentage of the overall turnout. Yet, the government still removed the nine and replaced with one. This is wrong, not representative, undemocratic, dictatorial, and an act of tyranny. Surely, if only 14% turn out, this must tell you that the 86% majority are happy with the status quo and therefore do not want to change anything. More updates into our legislation section. Our researchers John and Julia are being kept intensely busy as the EU machine ramps up its campaign for a federal United States of Europe. This article considers a recent review of the human rights strategy. The report urges the Commission to draft new legislation across multiple areas of governance. You can expect a great deal more legislation entering the pipeline and we'll be doing our best to keep on top of it and keep you informed. Episode 3 of Eurocon, presented by Trevor Coleman, MEP, in this episode, Eurocon looks at the UK's entry into the EU reaching back to 1973. This short film investigates the claims by politicians that Britain could not survive economically outside the EU and that leaving it would cost jobs and be critical to the viability of our economy. Are we being given a true evaluation of this single market? Eurocon investigates. Today in our video library, The Battle for Britain, Anthony J. Hilder and Fern of England take a look at the British Constitution and consider the issues faced by Britain as viewed from the perspective of a US citizen. 
That's all from me at the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, www.theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is The E Unit. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. And finally, our The Word programme is active again. If you would like one of our public speakers to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Rick Timmis for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.